you know, where do you feel like the industry is headed? Like you got your finger on that, on that pulse. What's the next two years like? What's the next five years like? Where do you think we're headed? So great question. So there's two things to think about. Uh, there's a great expansion in the pure number of people turning 65. And now I'm leaning this, cat, this, this discussion more on the Medicare piece. But, I'll, but of course, final expense fits right into that genre of 55, 65 and over. But the expansion of the number of people on Medicare is, is at the fastest time in history. As we were laughing about off camera, I was doing my decade planning. I do plan a decade at a time. And at the end of this one, 2029, I'll be 65. But so there's an expanded growth in the sheer number. But the way those consumers will buy, enroll, and do things are going to evolve. It'll be more technology-based. You know, there's new platforms available. We make them available to agents where you can do online enrollments. And as you get sophisticated, and I'll be careful here, you can even do enrollments. And I'm going to say the word telephonically. Now, again, there's a great debate about the compliance elements. Don't let the Medicare people come running. But that mm -hmm. technology is going to evolve and grow so that I retire to the kitchen table is going to become more of ivory tower technology. Ivory Tower kiosk at one of these uh, drug outlets that are owned by these large companies. So we as agents are going to need to evolve and stay ahead of the technology curve. If you're still turning in paper applications, you're already a dinosaur. Mm. You've got to learn to get engaged with the, with the way the technology and the way the carriers want to interact with you with the technology so you can be at the forefront of change as it's coming already. Wow. I mean, I like Jurassic Park, but but I don't want to be a dinosaur in this industry, right? I mean, dang, that's good. That's a strong, bold statement, though, and I like it. Well, what, what, know, yeah. good. No, well, no, Landon, I was just going to say, you know, and, and even as you mentioned Jurassic Park, and, and I think uh, Dr. Landon said something about life finds a way, you know, as agents, we do have to evolve. We've got to have uh, an eye on the future. Uh, and it's not that I could eat immediately say that we're competing with the carrier, but if the carrier is relying on us to bring the, the opportunities to them and say, here's your membership. Oh, and by the way, here's your lifetime renewal in the case of Medicare Advantage, then we've got to deliver on that in a way that makes consistent economic sense for the carrier and do it in a way that's, uh, that's going to grow with the technology that's available. So there's so much more to that, but I think that's the key. It's getting bigger, but it's going to evolve and technology is going to be at the forefront. I could easily see it, man. I usually could. That's good. I mean, I know you're a big believer in helping agents, uh, networking, learning, you're writing books, you know, obviously self-improvement, personal development is, is, is important to you. Uh, what is it about events that, that you like so much? Cause you guys are putting one on in the middle of putting one on right now. Uh, no, absolutely. Uh, so, you know, and, and hopefully not to feel like I'm proselytizing by using some of these terms, but it's a lot like church. I can watch one of my favorite pastors online and I can watch it on video and YouTube. And there, there's an experience in that. There's a learning in that. And, and it feeds and it resonates at a level of life. But when you put yourself in an atmosphere, Napoleon Hill talks about it in Think and Grow Rich, the mastermind syndrome, actually the sixth mind, the sixth mind is there if there's five of us in a room. Something about being in an electric environment of four or 500 agents that are going through the same struggles as you, uh, engaging in the same opportunities, some sitting high, some sitting low. So I think there's something about proximity that has a certain amount of osmosis to it. It's a little bit placebo, but at the end of the day, you start, you leave there feeling like you can take on the giant that's been killing you every day for the last two weeks. It's funny, we pull agents out of the field for a week for that event. So there's a three week month, we still do more production because of the makeup. It's what they come back energized to do. So I'd say the first thing is just atmospheric, getting in the place where the energy uh, resides and then pulling into that energy. And then there's all the tactical things you'll learn, the carriers you can meet, all the things that are additive to the experience. That's good. Dude, that's incredible. So how many agents do you, you know, how many agents do you feel like you've personally helped over the years? I mean, if you had to put a number to it. So it's, it, you know, Landon, and that's a fair question. And, and you know, I, I, by way of modesty, um, I'm actually now in the terms of impact somewhere in the 50 to 60,000 range. Um, 
Think of you know holding webinars as simple as a webinar, as simple as holding an agent boot camp. There's 50 in the room, and then there's meetings where you get to train, and there's 500. Having done that now for 24 years, uh, the numbers start to grow. Uh, and I do some things internationally as well. So some of those crowds have been a little bit larger, but they're still agent based. They're still insurance based. Uh, we're all kind of one big happy family internationally because we all again face the same opportunity and sometimes the same challenges, but somewhere in that 50 to 60,000. Well, if there's anybody that has their finger on the pulse of sort of, you know, helping agents and putting a sole focus on that, um, it's you. And then also you have your finger on the post finger on the pulse of what's next as well. You know, one of the things I love to do with guys like yourself who just are just seeping with wisdom, it's like, you totally. know, you wrote your book, you know, uh, sales from the, the master's table. It's like wisdom from the master. Just anything you say, it's like good grief. It's like, I'm going to go back and watch this. And you, I don't think you realize the little things that he says that I'm like, oh my gosh, like it's just coming out of him naturally. So author of seven books, he said you had three more on the way. So what, what's knocking around in your brain right now in terms of the wisdom that you're trying to add value in these next three books? Obviously, you've already formulated that in some way. Can we have any sneak peek on Brandon Clay's sort of wisdom he's about to drop on the community? All, 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 the, the, this is, uh, what, what, what do they call that? Uh, you heard it here first? Exclusive, you know, breaking, breaking news. news. <laughs> you know, we heard it from Brandon. Not sure how breaking, but so, you know, and in, in both you guys mentioned it. Uh, I'm big into self-development, personal development. I read uh, voraciously and, and not that that, you know, is to impress anyone, but I was raised under the whole thing that you just read, you read, you read, you learn and you digest. I'm on Blinkist. I do Audible. I read physical books. I do e-tablets. If I buy a book, I might have four forms of it available. And, and that means so a $10 book may cost me 50 bucks, but I'm consuming it in four different ways. So to make sure I finish it, to make sure I digest it, and then I have a way to, to express it back in my day-to-day -day living, if it's, a, if it's something that's gonna make me better, uh, or if it, it just gives me something fresh and new to talk about, to relate to people. So Landon, right now, my focus and goal is a little less of the technical side and more about getting people to see their lives in a much bigger way. And that does immediately have an impact on the way people run business, people raise their children, people uh, engage their hobbies, whatever it might be. So I'm more into that vein at this point. Well, can, we, can we unpack that at all a little bit? You know, ap so absolutely. So one of them actually, which it would be directly related to sales, is called authentic sales voice. Mm. You know, we, we get trained and we sit down in a class and we learn all these things through rote training and rote learning. And look, I understand that scripts are valuable, particularly in call center environments. But at the agent level, at the kitchen table or in other interactions, if you're not being authentic, you're losing sales, not because you don't have a great solution for the situation that's being presented, but you're not doing it in a way that's believable and authentic. So I have two concepts, the message, which ultimately is the product, the pitch, the features, the advantages, the benefits, but then there's the messenger and that's us. And the, the nuancing and the idiosyncratic way we deliver our message as the messenger, to me, has everything to do with conversion. So if I simply show up as a bad messenger with a great message, I'm just an order taker. Mm -hmm. And that's going to get me a semblance of success. But if I can refine my voice in incorporating the message, the product, the solution, and doing that in a way that's natural, a lot of agents don't network. They don't ask for referrals. I'm wondering why. Because deep down, they don't feel they've earned and merited it, which at the root of it for some of them is that they already know they're sort of faking a personality to close a sale. And I'm hoping that all made sense. So with the authentic sales voice approach, you come to the heart of what resonates to you. And I always say it this way, you're, you're talking, you're selling voice should equal your buying ear. How do you like to buy? How do you make purchases? So you should be naturally and instinctively using that concept uh, when you go out to meet people and engage to sell. That's awesome. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask about too, I almost jumped in and asked a second ago, but I remembered is uh, they say that the most successful people on earth do a ton of reading. They say that CEOs read an average of what, 50 books a year or something, maybe more. Um, how many books a year do you read? So in combination of physical, Blinkist, which is a great app, Audible, 
uh, I'm at about one a week. Wow. So, you know, books like Ray Dalio's Principle, those are going to take a little longer because they're thick and they're heavy. It's 18 hours of, of uh, audible content. But, and I'm again, not trying to be a purist here, but I, I tried to watch the Farmers Open the other day, uh, golf. I love golf. I'm a big golf fan. I treat golf like a soap opera <laughs> and I don't have a TV. Um, and then I realized that I'd actually have to get an app that had, a t that had the capabilities to watch TV, to watch it. My point is most of my life is either spent doing something like this, engaged in my professional life, my personal things, the things I enjoy, or developing myself through reading or writing. Hey, if you love this video and you want to 10X your income, I got the video here just for you to help you do that. It's right there. Click on it. And I'll see you. Hey, most people don't know how to 10X their income. They're average, but they don't want to be average. And I'm guessing you don't want to either. I'm going to show you how the average insurance agent earns $50,600.